Two, three. Bones of upper limb. Upper limb is permitted three movements. Its bones comprise pectoral girdle consisting of clavicle and scapula, humerus, radius, ulna, and skeleton of hand. Clavicle is a long bone placed slightly obliquely. Lateral end is usually higher. It articulates with the clavicular notch of sternum to form sternoclavicular joint and with acromion process of scapula to form the acromioclavicular joint. It articulates with clavicular notch of sternum to form sternoclavicular joint. Clavicle comprises two ends and a shaft in between the two ends. Medial end is large, rhomboid, while lateral end is small and flattened. Shaft is convex anteriorly in medial two-third part and concave anteriorly in lateral one-third part. The junction is a weak point. Fractures commonly occur here. Medial two-third consists of anterior, superior, posterior and inferior surfaces. Lateral one-third consists of flat upper and lower surfaces and anterior and posterior borders. Inferior surface in middle one-third contains a shallow groove. Medial end is bigger than flat lateral end. Anterior surface is convex forwards. Middle one-third of inferior surface shows a shallow groove. This figure is showing the superior view. Shaft is convex anteriorly in medial two-third and concave anteriorly in lateral one-third. The junction is a weak point. Fractures commonly occur here. The inferior surface in middle one-third shows a shallow groove called the subclavian groove. Side identification. Medial end is quadrangular and lateral end is flattened. Anterior surface is convex forwards. The middle one-third of inferior surface shows a shallow groove called the subclavian groove. Attachments. Clavicular fibers of pectoralis major arise from medial two-third of convex anterior surface. Clavicular fibers of pectoralis major arise from medial two-third of convex anterior surface. On the upper surface of medial half of clavicle arises the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid. It is seen when chin is turned to opposite side against resistance. Inferior surface of clavicle gives attachment to the subclavius muscle. The blue area is the muscle and green line around it is the clavi pectoral fascia. The figure shows the subclavius muscle arising from the first costochondral junction and the muscle gets inserted into the inferior surface of middle one-third of clavicle. It provides soft cushion for the vessels and nerves passing into the axilla. Anterior border and part of upper surface in lateral one-third gives attachment to the deltoid muscle. Clavicle arises from lateral one-third of the clavicle 
from the acromion fibre from the acromion and from the spine of scapula the fibers arising from acromion are strong and multipennate in nature the whole muscle is inserted into the deltoid tuberosity of humerus posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle provides distal attachment to trapezius the shrugging muscle voilà. ligaments close to the medial end on inferior surface of clavicle is the costo clavicular ligament attached around the medial end is the capsule of sterno clavicular joint also attached to upper end is intra articular disc of sterno clavicular joint close to lateral end on its inferior surface is the conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge these give attachments to conoid and trapezoid parts of coraco clavicular ligament at the lateral end is also attached the capsule of acromio clavicular joint also containing an intra articular disc mm -hmm. the figure shows the costo clavicular ligament attached on the inferior aspect of the clavicle on the lateral side is the conoid and trapezoid parts of the strong coraco clavicular ligament the medial end shows an intra articular disc even the lateral end the acromio clavicular joint also contains intra articular disc which may be in two parts scapula is a triangular shaped bone placed on the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage it comprises two sur surfaces the scapula comprises of two surfaces three borders three angles three fossae and three processes and spine surfaces dorsal surface shows a prominent spine of scapula ventral surface is concave borders upper border is small containing a supra scapular notch towards the lateral side medial border is longer thin and lies between the upper and inferior angles lateral border is thickest between the large lateral angle the glenoid cavity and the inferior angle angles lateral angle is surmounted by a large concave glenoid cavity for articulation with the rounded head of humerus to form the most mobile shoulder joint the mobility can be seen in a fast bowler the mobility can be seen in a fast bowler like kapil dev inferior angle forms the apex of the triangular shaped scapula processes on the upper border just above the supra scapular notch is a beak like coracoid process on the dorsal surface of scapula is a raised projection the spine of scapula it comprises an upper surface a lower surface and a free border continuation of spine of scapula is the acromion process with a free lateral border it also has a clavicular notch 
for articulation with the lateral end of the clavicle. Fossae. Spine of scapula divides the dorsal surface into an upper, smaller, supraspinous fossa and a lower, larger, infraspinous fossa. The costal or ventral surface is concave and is called subscapular fossa. It shows three to four ridges. <coughs> Side identification. Dorsal surface with the spine to be placed dorsally. Inferior angle to be put downwards. <coughs> Lateral angle with glenoid cavity to be placed laterally. Correct. Scapula comprises two surfaces, three borders, three angles, three fossae and three processes. Surfaces. Dorsal surface shows a prominent spine of scapula. Ventral surface is concave. Borders. The upper border is small, containing a suprascapular notch towards lateral side. Medial border is long, thin and lies between the upper and inferior angles. Lateral border is thickest between the large lateral angle, the glenoid cavity and the inferior angle. Angles. Lateral angle is surmounted by a large concave glenoid cavity for articulation with the rounded head of humerus to form the most mobile shoulder joint. Processes. On the upper border, just above the suprascapular notch is a beak-like coracoid process. On the dorsal surface of scapula is a raised projection, the spine of scapula. It comprises an upper surface, lower surface and a free border. Continuation of spine of scapula is the acromion process with a free lateral border. It also has an attachment for the lateral end of the clavicle. For C, spine of scapula divides the dorsal surface into an upper, smaller supraspinous fossa and a lower, larger infraspinous fossa. The costal or ventral surface is concave and is called subscapular fossa. It shows three to four ridges. Side identification. Dorsal surface with the spine to be placed dorsally, inferior angle to be put downwards and lateral angle with glenoid cavity to be placed laterally. Okay. Muscular attachments. Supraspinous fossa gives origin to supraspinatus. Infraspinous fossa gives origin to infraspinatus. The concave subscapular fossa gives origin to multipanate subscapularis. The medial border on the costal surface gives, gives insertion to first, second, third digitations of serratus anterior. The inferior angle on the costal surface gives attachment to lower five digitations of the important serratus anterior muscle. Medial border on the dorsal surface is divided into three areas for the attachment of levator scapulae from upper angle to root of spine of scapula. Rhomboids minor opposite root of spine of scapula and rhomboids major along the rest of the medial border. The lateral border. Upper two-third gives attachment to teres minor with a groove for circumflex scapular artery. Lower rounded area is for attachment of teres major Inferior angle gives attachment to a slip of latissimus dorsi muscle. The glenoid cavity, its margins give attachment to the labrum glenoidal. Supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of biceps femoris. 
weil infraglinoid